All right, this is, well, it's a watching the world burn video, but uh, <clears throat> it's just a talking video. Haven't done this in a while. Uh, I had the dog and I was using the dog as an excuse to stay out of the heat. It's about 100 degrees. I think the heat index is about 115 right now, so I don't expect the phone to last long. So I figured I better start making <laughs> In this video before the phone explodes. You know, these lithium batteries have been known to catch on fire. Uh, so anyway, I, I wanted to do, I'm calling this the, we're, we're all screwed video. We're all just screwed. Uh, first thing I wanted to get into was what I think you might, because I got to talk about what's most important to you first, uh, and then get into things that you need to know about. Uh, and this is not financial advice. Anything I say, you will lose all your money. So uh, let's get into finance first because that's, well, next to God, that's the most important thing in your life. If you don't have the money to pay your bills, you're going to end up homeless or on the street, uh, kicked out of your house, foreclosed upon, uh, starving, you know, you name it. So anyway, let's just still talk about finance. First thing is, obviously, if you've got money in a checking or savings account earning 0.0001%, which uh, probably many of you might be, you've got to look at moving that money someplace else. Uh, check out credit unions in your area if you just want something simple. Uh, like my credit union here, uh, Florida Credit Union by the way, uh, they're paying about 2 to 3% on the checking account. Uh, and by the way, I, I, I had the money in the checking account, I just didn't have much in there. But then, you know, I, I moved money over there and then I realized, yeah, I, I said, well, why are they paying so little? You know, I want to do something with it. And then they said, well, we have an interest checking account. And I said, well, why didn't you just put the money in there to begin with, right? And they said, well, you got to ask for it. Yeah, so get your money at least into an interest checking account, earning between 2 and 3%. And I'm sure if you look around, you can find some banking or credit union institution where you can earn that, at least that pittance. Uh, it doesn't keep up with inflation, but that's something. Second thing you can do, and by the way, and empty the savings account. Savings accounts, they're worthless. So that, that there's not a savings account out there paying over 1% that I can find. Uh, I don't know why interest-bearing checking accounts pay more than savings these days. Uh, so, uh, and then even the money markets are terrible. I, 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 I don't see those except between 1% and 2%. So if you're not earning over 2%, uh, you've got to move your money. Second thing you can look at is uh, CDs. Okay, at uh, Navy Federal Credit Union, the last CD that I bought was a three-month CD. It's earning about 4%. That's not a whole lot better than uh, 2 to 3%, which is in my checking account. Uh, I only put a little bit. I buy like one a month, try to ladder the CDs. Uh, so I've got a couple of year-long CDs, so I stagger those out. Those pay you a bit better interest rate. Uh, I got those through Navy Federal Credit Union. They're paying about 4.5% right now. And as interest rates go up, I could be earning about 4.8, 4.9%. But so let's look at the, uh, the global. Oh yeah, and then of course you've got 10-year uh, treasuries right now. 10-year treasuries are paying, good Lord, over 5%. So, uh, you know, if you've got your money in a brokerage account, which you should, you should have a portion of your money in some sort of brokerage account. I, let me give you some recommendations. You've got, uh, um, You've got uh, Charles Schwab, uh, that's my least favorite. You got Fidelity, highly recommend them. Uh, I, I assume Scott Trade's probably still out there. They, I don't know, they're okay. Uh, e Trade's turning into Merrill Lynch. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that. So I would say Fidelity would be my recommendation. It's very easy. You just even Fidelity even has local offices. Like I got one here in Central Florida that I can actually drive in and talk to people. That's very unusual. That's very unusual. So uh, that's that's an option. Open up a brokerage account, move some money in there, buy you some 10-year treasuries, earning over 5%. Now, is there a danger to those 10-year treasuries? Yes. Let's get into China for just a minute. Evergrande. Evergrande's coming back. Okay, I don't know if you probably don't follow world events. You can, everybody works for a living. But uh, the whole Evergrande crisis is going to come to a head here within the next couple of months. That means that China's got to do something to cover that massive debt bomb that, that has been created. China's in financial trouble, just like we are, just like a lot of people are. And uh, so once that financial bubble bursts, 
What is China going to do with all those treasuries it has? And what is that going to do to 10-year treasuries? I don't know. I'm not a financier. I'm just telling you what's going to happen here soon. And uh, so when they dump all those treasuries, and then they, was that going to knock down the price of treasuries? Maybe if you're a financier or smarter than I am, you might tell me what, what's going to happen there. Uh, could be uh, could be very interesting. So uh, that's that's the first part of the video. I just wanted to talk about finances, treasuries, where you should be parking your money. Of course, uh, right now, if you want to get into hard assets, uh, silver's at a really good price. I always say the you know, same thing over and over again. Silver's between 22, 23. You got a um, spot, by the way, and uh, SD bullion. By the way, SD bullion, they uh, put up their their monthly specials on Monday. Uh, afternoon uh, so don't buy anything from SD bullion until after Monday you know don't wait till later in the week when you know everything's uh, either sold out or or the price has gone up uh, you can usually pick up a really good deal uh, in the evening on Monday or Tuesday whatever uh, whatever their latest special is a lot of times you're getting really good deals a two two three dollars over spot now on a, a, a lot of uh, good silver coins uh, of course they got gold platinum you know the whole deal uh, that's uh, that's something else to be thinking about. Uh, let's get into real estate just a minute. Uh, the bubble is crashing, uh, it, but you see lunacy. Uh, I was watching the Economic Ninja, and there's a huge development going up in California, and these are 400 to million dollar homes going up by the thousands. And I'm like, who? I, I think it's just out of say, outside of Santa Monica or something like that. Who's going to buy those? How are you going to make a living in, in California with those taxes and everybody leaving? You know, all the businesses are shut down. Well, I wasn't going to get into this later in the video, but look at San Francisco. I mean, why in the hell is Elon keeping his headquarters there? Maybe it's just to make fun of the Democrats in, <laughs> in San Francisco. Because <laughs> I think his building was going to be the last one standing. Or the last one with any occupants in it. Because uh, everything else is boarded up, the businesses are shut down, uh, and, and you know, I, well, let's get into it. Why and why is that? Well, it's by design. The Democrats want to destroy the United States so that they can build back better and remake it into the Marxist uh, ideology that they want. That means they have to destroy everything. But the problem is, uh, they're destroying themselves first, which is okay. I mean, I'm. I'm glad that the Democrats are getting what they vote for, but did they vote for it? I think there's a lot of a, a fraud or questionable things that go on in these Democrat uh, stronghold areas that uh, ensure even if the populace voted uh, for something different, it ensures that the Democrat candidate, but then you still got to remember the people allowed that fraud to take place. You can go, if you you can be a poll worker if you're an upstanding citizen, and you know you didn't vote Democrat, and try, I mean, I'm not saying you will. I mean, things can get so rigged where, where like during the 2020 election where they actually bolt the doors closed and cover up the windows. You know, there's, and, and then the police, if the police are on the side of the, uh, the criminals, there's nothing you can do about it. But what I'm saying is, you know, San Francisco is just my, my one example of what's going on. All right, I gotta take a break, heat's getting to me phone's going to explode. I'm sure I got to cut it off and let it cool down. Okay, the good news is you don't have to look at my ugly mug because I got to watch the phone because I'm sure it's going to start overheating and I, and I can't tell when it's overheating unless I'm looking at the back of the phone. The good news is you can enjoy the hike with me. So I wanted to talk about uh, the, um, the globalists, the satanic, evil, uh, psychopathic, globalists that are in charge of the world uh, and how that relates to you and me. By the way, I sorry if I'm breathing hard. You ever, uh, I remember back in the Marine Corps, I'd be jogging and uh, at that time, when I first joined the Marine Corps, I was in semi-decent shape, but you, back then, semi-decent shape didn't cut it. And every time I would get to where I could make it through a, a day of PT, they would increase, you know, so you would go from one and a half miles to one and a three quarter miles, and one and three quarter miles to two miles, then two miles to three miles, and three miles to four. And so anyway, it just seemed like I never could get over the hump. And so a lot of times towards the end of the run, this is back when people helped each other. Guys, uh, my legs, 
my legs on a run this is at paris island be on a hot day just like today you know imagine running in this heat and uh my legs would just you know you, your brain is willing but your body's not and my legs would just give out and i would start to fall and i you know i never really thought about it but for some reason the guys next to me would catch me and they would grab grab onto my arms and hook me under the armpits unbeknownst or maybe beknownst to the drill instructors it was hard to get anything past the drill instructors i maybe the drill instructors just left it alone you know because they were proud uh, anytime you're helping your fellow marine i think that's a good thing and they would carry me for you know a ways and they'd say little man that's what they called me they, little man you got your feet man you got your feet yet you got your feet yet and of course i would try to speak i'd say and of course I'm shaking my head and then of course my my legs it usually was towards the end of the run anyway and so a lot of times you know we we would come to a, you know basically come into a stop and my legs would come back just enough I'd be shaking all over and then I could stand on my own and all I could kind of get out was just thanks thanks anyway getting back to the globals because I, I just wanted to explain my patent that's 110 degrees uh with the humidity and the factor, and there's not much breeze today, but enjoy the hike with me. Uh, the satanic globalists and uh, what we're up against. And, you know, I, I know so many uh, quasi religious people, and they would not, well, they will not acknowledge the fact that there's good and evil on every plane of existence physical, metaphysical, spiritual, and it is, it is here on earth. And, uh, and they just can't come to the realization that that's what you are fighting okay and and unfortunately the globalist psychopaths uh, have taken over most of the western nations including the united states and have installed their puppet psychopaths underneath them and so we're in a world of hurt at this point we're we being led by sorry the uh <laughs> the phone overheated in that uh, clip uh, when i was talking about the globalist um i'm back home feel good I tell you what, it's good to get out in 115 degree temperatures. If you don't do it, it's just like being in a sauna, except you get a good hike in. Um, anyway, I wanted to finish that conversation. And so my point was, is that, you know, when you go to church and when you try to, to broach these topics with the people at your church, you know, these are supposedly Christians. You know, that that's the only church I've attended uh, for the most part, Baptist, Methodist. Uh, my girlfriend in college was Catholic. Uh, that was kind of a bizarre form of Christianity with all the kneeling and um, the Latin. It was, um, I don't know, I, I, I just prefer, I, I guess my favorite was the Methodist. But anyway, and so they pretend, you know, that they're on the side of God, but they're not willing to to view the world with the eyes that you, you need between good and evil. But I wanted to get back to, you know, uh, the life of a, a globalist puppet. And when I say globalist puppet, I'm talking about Trudeau, um, Biden, Macron, Schultz. Uh, oh, I can't remember that woman in Finland. Uh, you know, these are all uh, uh, political figures that the globalist money um, from uh, Klaus, KLS Klaus Schwab, has put in from the bullies in Brussels. Um, they, they really... So it's kind of like uh, back in the Lord of the Rings, one ring to rule them all. And, uh, but I can't imagine what that life would be like. You know, imagine that your decisions are not your decisions. Uh, you know, Biden can't make a decision on his own unless his globalist masters tell him what to do. Let's look at uh, just Joe Biden. Now, while uh, Maui was burning, he was on vacation. <laughs> now, imagine that had been uh, Donald Trump, if he'd been on vacation and uh, somebody asked him, Hey, Donald, what do you think about the Maui fire? fire? You know, because he was at the beach. And, uh, and Trump looked over and said, no comment. That's, that's a globalist. I mean, what he's telling you right there is he doesn't care about the United States. He's a globalist. He does not care about the people. All that the globalists care about is the globalist agenda. Okay, their, their power, their riches, their authoritarian. They want to rule everything. Okay, and you will have nothing. All right, so that's my first point. And then, of course, Biden, what happens then? He goes on vacation now. He's going skiing. What is it, in Tahoe, I think, is where he's going next. Uh, and then, in the meantime, 
the, uh, the, their globalist puppets in the Congress and in, uh, of course, Biden have requested another $32 billion be sent to, which is much more than the rebuilding of Maui. Uh, they're a Democrat state, no less. So Biden's supposed to be a Democrat. He's not a Democrat. He's a globalist. I mean, you know, people got to understand. They're, they're, the Uniparty in Washington, D.C., Republicans and Democrats, now Republicans far less, and um, they do a much better job. So that's all that I can say. You know, everybody says, oh, you're a huge Republican. No, I'm just telling you I'm voting... But it's not the lesser of two evils. You still got to do your homework. You know, if, if you discover that the, the Republican candidate is a globalist, you know, vote third party. That's all you can do, you know, um, unless we're going to have a revolution, which we might. I, I, I think I'm, I'm agreeing with Tim Poole. Uh, if Trump doesn't get elected, I think we're going to civil war. I don't see any way around it. Um, anyway, that, that's it. I just wanted to talk about that example of globalism is how... Little Washington, D.C. and Joe Biden, they, they'll send globalist money to Ukraine because the, well, see, the reason they're sending the money to Ukraine is they're threatened. OK, their 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 unilateral control of the world is coming to an end. It's becoming a bipolar world and they're scared. They don't care about Europe, people, European people. They don't care about the American people. They'll destroy the whole world. They just don't want to lose their control on power. Understand that. And you and I mean nothing to the U.S. government. The British people mean nothing to the British government. The German people mean nothing to the German government. The French people mean nothing to the French government. The Belgian people mean nothing to the Belgian government. The, you know, I could go on and on. The only nation that I know of in NATO is Hungary. I think, um, uh, he, well, I, I can't remember the leader there, but he does a great job. Uh, and and they, he cares about his people. And I hate to say it, Putin cares about his people. He might be a psychopathic uh, lunatic, but he looks out for his people. Same with Schwab, same with Macron. And, and basically what they're telling them to do is to be the most hated people on the planet. You think anybody in Canada likes Trudeau? I mean, well, I'm sure there are some people, you know, but they're probably Satanists themselves. <laughs> or communists or Marxists or whatever you want to call them. Same with Biden. You know, the only the Democrats would like Biden. I mean, if you're an independent, I don't see how you can. Uh, well, when I say Biden, he's, he's just a meat puppet in the White House. But, um, uh, you know, and Macron, I mean, Macron's just a shallow, superficial nobody. Um, and then Schultz, I mean, when I look at him, I, I, I think he's just kind of a brainless clown in, in charge of Germany. But all these people have been put in place to destroy their countries. There's no other explanation. Germany's uh, been destroyed. They're, they're, they're de-industrializing. And Schultz went along with the whole damn thing. He, he, he wanted his country destroyed. He went along with the globalist plan. He, he was in it for the money. I, I can't imagine what a life would be like when you know that you're not in charge of your own fate. So what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that because you and I, even though we don't have much, uh, but we, we do, a, you know, we fight against it. Now, I understand you got to suck up uh, if you've got a job or whatever, you you got to go along with the uh, the wokeness to a certain degree. Uh, maybe you even had to participate in diversity trading to, to feed your family. Uh, pretend, but you know, but in your heart, in your mind, you know that you're just pretending, and and you're going to fight against it in any way that you can. It might just be just a little teeny thing that you can do each day. Maybe just get into one conversation, trying to convince. An, an, uh, uh, another person about one little fact, you know, that, that you feel is important that you know for sure. For, for example, let's go back to the, uh, the PSYOP, the COVID PSYOP. Okay, I can't discuss that on YouTube, but, uh, but if you've learned something since that whole thing took place, like I, I, was, with, um, I was with my ex-wife, I had to pick her up at the airport. Um, by the way, you know, in, in the Lord's Prayer, forgive those who trespass against us. Uh, I haven't, I don't know. I, I, it's hard to say whether I've forgiven her, but I'm trying to, to live up to that Christian. Um, cause she, she felt like she, she could have destroyed me and she didn't. And that, and that's good enough for her. She's, she's a globalist lunatic. Um, cause you know, I, I was telling her, I said, they're, they're talking about putting masks back on people. And she said, they should, they should, everybody should be wearing masks. I said, for what? What are you going to wear? I mean, you know, she, hell, even back during the whole thing, she was a hypocrite. She wasn't wearing a mask most of the time. She was playing golf with no mask on. 
I, <laughs> I mean, I but she didn't want kids and mess. Thank God I'm divorced, right? All right, so that's it. I, I, I'm done with this conversation. I, was, I, I wanted to get into a lot of other things. We're going to add a couple of clips on, and, uh, and then this video will be done. I, I guess after, since I'm, I'm making this right here, I don't want to have to make another clip. Let's watch uh, the tanks performing in Ukraine, and then I'm going to get into some other topics uh, out on the trail, and that'll be the end of the video. Let's check it out. On for the expectations from Ukraine's counteroffensive to shoot from the highest of hopes to the hardest of crashes. As Kiev troops crawled forward, leaving a trail of dead bodies and scorched NATO vehicles, saber rattling made way to gloom and bewilderment. Meanwhile, Russia quietly resumed its own advance here in the Lugansk Republic. These T-90 tanks, Russia calls the best in the world. So obviously it's a much desired prey for Ukraine's artillery, other tanks, kamikaze drones, you name it. So they have to stay very well hidden until they go into action together with other tank models, perhaps not as advanced. Tanks are the backbone of any offensive. They rush into battle first, guns blazing, clearing the path for the infantry. Javelins didn't justify themselves at all. From the very beginning of the military operation we saw them just lying on the roads. I mean, Ukrainian soldiers didn't use them. What's good in the forest? Rocket-propelled grenades aren't terrifying. Only mines and artillery are. In the past weeks Russia has had a major breakthrough here. The first line of Ukraine's defenses that had been impenetrable for months has collapsed at last. Last time we had a task, taking a position in the Lysychansk Krimenaya forest. The task was completed within three days. We hollowed out the enemy from positions. Well done, boys. They did it. Every assault has its price, measured in people's flesh, limbs and lives. Being so close to combat, tanks often play a crucial role in whether a soldier will get treatment in time. Injured after the battle, now they will throw them in and there will be an evacuation. Life here is all about sweat, dirt and blood. Yet servicemen need no time to explain what keeps them going. For the sake of this, I go forward so as not to desecrate the memory of fallen comrades, so that when they look from above, they say, this is my soldier, he works to the end. And of course, for the grandfathers and great-grandfathers. When we've liberated these settlements, the locals greeted us and applauded us. They complained about the armed forces of Ukraine, that they had been offending them and treating them not like human beings. We want to liberate the territory as soon as possible, so that people can live peacefully here. I'm a Gishdan of reporting from the Donbass RT. So the phone has totally overheated. <laughs> and the heat index is between 111 and 115. But well, check out the beehives. It's so hot. The bees are in the, Well, they're moving around. Oh, yeah, there you are. You see them, see them above the bees? Isn't that cool? I just wanted to get that on the video. Every time I walk past here, I'm just so glad to see these beehives. It means there's still life on this planet. Don't know how long before the phone overheats, but I wanted to show you as we get into the Maui, dis or Maui, Maui, excuse me, discussion of Hawaii, what a horror story that was. This is what's called fire management here in Florida. There are other aspects of the Chernobyl Memorial Forest that have been uh, stripped like this. We do a lot of this here in Florida. And I you know, wanted to point to a couple of things with the cause of that fire. Number one, there's, it's a Democrat state. That's, that's the number one cause. Of course, the second cause was a lack of fire management. Uh, they probably weren't doing any controlled burns or, or clear cuts or fire lanes. See back here? This is a fire lane back here. That uh, gives you a break. Now, the winds were blowing so hard in Maui that wouldn't have helped. But the other thing that they did not do was they didn't have any fire plan. 
Uh, the reason there's evidence of that was that the electrical grid wasn't shut down. So when those electrical lines blew over and the electrical lines hit uh, uh, dry material, it sparked that, that uh, monstrous fire in multiple places. Uh, in, in any normal uh, state, other than a Democrat state, the power grid would have been shut down once you were getting 80 mile an hour winds. You don't want to leave the power, well, unless you're, you got heavy rain, you know, then you might try to keep the power grid up. But under dry conditions with just heavy winds, you know, uh, just common sense would tell you to shut down the power grid. We'll get more into it. Uh, I'm a little bit out of breath. I'm finally on my way in the home stretch here back to the car. <clears throat> I've got water there. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Well, to add to the Maui... Uh fire clip on how they didn't practice any sort of fire management because they're a Democrat state. Guess where the next fire broke out? <laughs> I got home. I just happened to cut the news on and I was thinking, you know, well, I was to see what's going on. Well, I, no, I think it was on uh, Twitter. And uh, there's another huge fire taking place in Oregon. Well, what's Oregon? You tell me, is that, what, what color is that state? Democrat! That another Democrat fire on, on state on fire. You know, have they ever heard of fire management? And I showed you fire management here in Florida because we're a Republican state. As I finish up <clears throat> this video, just wanted to tell you, as we face the threat of global thermal nuclear war, and I don't believe that the American people understand how close we are all to dying, just wanted to tell you where I am. I'm in the Chernobyl <laughs> Memorial Forest. I just thought that seemed kind of, uh, I don't know, a pointed end to this video. The Chernobyl Memorial Forest. Maybe I'll be here when that nuclear explosion goes off. Be fitting, wouldn't it? You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna... Cut you down.